2021 NHL Draft. 32 teams get their chance to pick their future. The Detroit Red Wings select. Is it a center? Michael Rasmussen, Joe Valeno. With his first National Hockey League goal. A sniper. Lucas Raymond. Philip Zadina. Zadina scores! Or shock the whole room. The Detroit Red Wings select Moritz Sider. The only question left to ask is, who's next? What is up, Hockey Town? Good morning. A good morning indeed it is. We saw the first round of the NHL draft yesterday with the Detroit Red Wings at pick six, picking Simon Edvinson and trading up for pick number 15 and getting goalie Sebastian Kosa. So I do want to thank Meyer for bringing you 2021 NHL draft day party. And I do want to thank you guys for joining me. It's an early morning. Quick turnaround for us. We were here last night uh, in the Chevy Plaza having a great party for the first round. But, of course, we have rounds two through seven today to talk about. And uh, to kick things off, though, I do want to talk a little bit about yesterday and give a look around the league. We saw some great prospects going for the top ten, but I do love our pick in uh, Simon Edvinson, but were there any surprises for you? I know my pick at pick six, Mason McTavish, he went third, guys. I got to give myself a pat on the back for that one. I, I agree with you because <laughs> I thought he was going to go a little bit later, but um, obviously he was one of the proven goal scorers in the draft and a uh, solid Peterborough Pete player. So, you know, he, he moved up the ladder, and that's always good when you see something like that. And one other pick I think that uh, was really a surprise was uh, Cole Sillinger. I really thought that, uh, you know, he was going to go down and maybe be around 2021, but he moved up to 12th with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So that impressed me pretty much, and uh, obviously they think a lot about him. Right. I, I would say another guy that's uh, Kent Johnson, the Michigan forward, going five to Columbus. I mean, that was the key because I, I think everyone thought, especially with uh, uh, Seth Jones being traded, that Columbus might go defense with that first pick, which allowed really Simon Edmondson to fall into Detroit's lap. Once uh, once Kent Johnson went, there was no question about that, uh, that the Red Wings were going to take Edmondson. I mean, they need left-handed shooting defensemen. So I, I think that was a bit of a surprise. And also, in although this isn't – it was draft-related, because it definitely affected the draft. But, you know, a couple of big names, a couple of big defensemen were traded yesterday mm -hmm. in Seth Jones and uh, Oliver ekman Larson mm -hmm. from uh, from the Coyotes who were able then to get a first-round pick. Uh, they, they, they got up to ninth uh, to, with the Vancouver Canucks. So uh, a lot of action, a, lot, a flurry of activity, and it's only going to be uh, heightened today. You know what, Carly and Art? I, I think one of the big surprises, too, involved the goaltender in Jesper Wallstad. And the reason why I say it's a surprise is because we all know the Red Wings took Sebastian Kosa, but the Minnesota Wild actually moved up to get Jesper Wallstad at the 20th spot. And, you know, to me, I thought maybe he might go a little bit higher than that, and uh, he didn't. So, to me, that was a little bit of a surprise. And the thing about Wallstad is that, uh, you know, he's almost NHL ready right now, even though he's a youngster. So we'll have to wait and see how that progresses. We'll have to see uh, what Sebastian Kosa can do, but we'll talk a little more about that in the, in the later on in the program. Well, yeah, I was a big Wallstead fan, I think, as everybody <laughs> knows. In my mic draft, I had the Red Wings taking him at 6. Uh, but, uh, you know, after, you know, once I got home last night at about 4 a.m., uh, I was looking at the, uh, 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 you know, why, why uh, Kosa over Wallstead, and the thing that was consistent is is that some teams knew that Wallstead was a stud because he played in the SHL. However, on the big ice surface, a goalie doesn't a goalie does not handle the puck quite as much as they do on a smaller ice surface. And Kosa's puck handling skills and his ability to play the puck was the deciding factor for a number of teams, and obviously the Red Wings were one of them. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you look at both goalies, they're both a steal, but it was interesting to see Steve Eiserman trade up for 15 and select someone, uh, the goalie, who we thought was going to go after Jesper Wallstedt. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. I do want to talk about uh, Michigan as a state had an exciting day in the first round of the NHL draft. Four out of the five, top five uh, players drafted were from Michigan. So I know you guys, Michiganders yourselves, you love to see it. You know what? I'm going to leave this one up to Art because I know Oh, he's just smiling from ear to ear. I, I, I said, you know, the the the, the uh, headline in the paper in the Ann Arbor News should be amazing because uh, four of the first five picks were University of Michigan players. Well, you know, I I think you know sometimes I you know I'm unfairly portrayed as being a real Michigan slappy, and I don't know where that comes from. But but I will say this: it's the talk of the hockey world today. I mean, you had 
four guys go in the top five of the NHL draft. All three of them played at Michigan. One is committed. And then if you throw in uh, um, Samakovich, I believe, hopefully, Mackie, that's Mackie, apologies to you and your family. I mean, he also went in the first round. So that's five picks, but uh, it, it's unprecedented. It, it is really, and as I said earlier, Kent Johnson going up to five. I was hoping that maybe the Red Wings would go to six with, uh, uh, we, we might consider Kent Johnson because. You know, he's Patrick Kane, only a little bit larger. He has all kinds of moves, and, and the knock against him was, can any of these moves work in the NHL? Well, if you have a repertoire of moves, I think he's going to be able to find two or three that are going to do, do, do quite nicely in the NHL. But, uh, hey, it's a big day. I mean, you know, it, it's really, really good. I just hope, I guess, that some really high-end high school football players are big NHL fans, and we're watching that draft, and maybe maybe Jim Harbaugh can uh, reap the benefits as well. Uh, and you know what's amazing, <laughs> what's amazing about the, the Michigan players is that I think most of them, if not all of them, are going to go back to school, and they're going to play for the University of, of Michigan. So, you know, that gives Detroit fans around town an opportunity to go to Yost Ice Arena and watch those Wolverines play. Well, like, you know, last night, I mean, the joke was, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know, one of the scouts was saying, well, now, I've, I've seen the NHL schedule, but where's Team 33? Where's the University of Michigan on this? I mean, where's their schedule? And, I, you, know, and they, you know, they kept joking. I mean, I, as much as maybe they wanted a different storyline, mm -hmm. it's really tough to ignore when you have four or five guys all going to play at the same place, all at the same university. And, you know, n no pressure on you, Mel Pearson, when we had you on the old Word, Word on Woodward show, but Michigan has to be the definitive favorite, the number one team in the country. And, you know, if these guys can put it together, you, you've got to think that Michigan's going to have a pretty good uh, uh, season next year. Yeah, I mean, as a Michigan State Spartan myself, I'm, I don't want to say I'm bummed to see it because I'm really excited for the state of Michigan as a whole, but would have liked to see a little bit of green and white mixed in there, but very happy for the Wolverines. Tough to say for me, but again, got to love it for the state of That's Michigan. That's why you're a pro, Carly. That's why we love you. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Uh, my chest hurts right now, but you know what? I'll power through it. <laughs> All right, moving on. I know we've been talking about a lot of prospects, but I do want to focus on Simon Edvinson. He was our uh, sixth overall pick for the Detroit Red Wings. So I know it's been very important for the Red Wings to draft a left-handed defenseman, but we were thinking that it would be an offense an offensive player drafted at sixth overall for the Detroit Red Wings. How do you feel about Simon Edvinson for the pick there for the Red Wings? Well, to be honest with you, I was a little bit surprised. I thought the Red Wings were pretty well settled in that uh, defensive position. I really thought that maybe they'd go with William Eklund, who was a forward. But, uh, you know, Steve Eisman went with the best player in the draft that he felt at that point, and that was Edvinson. And, you know, I tip my hat to you, Art, because as we were walking down to the stage yesterday, a couple hours before the show, you said, hey, they're going to pick Edvinson. So I don't know where you got your your information from, but you were absolutely correct. I tip my hat to you. But he's a big uh, left-handed shooting defenseman, and he's only going to grow into that big body. He's six foot four by the time he's playing in the National Hockey League. He's probably going to be about 220 pounds. And what's amazing right now is that the Red Wings are drafting tall defenseman. Mo Sider, he's a big guy, and uh, Edmondson, when he starts playing, he's a, he's a tall guy too, so you got a couple of Redwoods back there on the blue line. And down the road, uh, the Red Wings have been building from the net out, and it looks like uh, they'll be really strong defensively down the road. Well, that's certainly, I mean, when you look at Kosa, you look, you know, Detroit now, uh, goaltending was not a strength for them. You know, it really, really wasn't. They really didn't have a, a pipeline of prospects uh, uh, in that. Now you've got Nadalkovich and then uh, Sebastian Kosa. So suddenly you have two really good guys. Don't sit on uh, uh, Jan Bednosh. And, you know, and I still haven't given up on Philip Larson. If he can stay healthy, uh, I mean, because he was phenomenal uh, in the USHL in his one year in college at the University of Denver. So so Steve is building out from the crease out. I am not surprised for, for Edmondson from, the, from this standpoint. After Owen Power... And and Luke Hughes was in this mix, but Edvinson was consistently rated the second best defenseman in this draft after Owen Power, and they were both compared to Victor Hedman. So when I look at it, if I'm Steve and you need left-handed shooting defensemen as far as prospect, they have a plethora of right-handed shooting defensemen. Now, the right side looks really, really good, which, as Kenny and I know, that's the tough side. Yes, Everyone says you can't get enough <laughs> right-handed shooting defensemen. Detroit has a lot of them, at least in the pipeline. I don't know how many are going to play uh, for the Red Wings eventually, 
Finley, but they needed left-handed shots. And to get a guy like Edmondson at, at, at number six, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You've got to take him. He was the best player available at a position of need, and that's really what it's all about. You know, we always talk about best player available or, 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 or do you get the, the most talented player. Well, in Simon Edmondson, they got the best player available and a position of need all into one. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, what was a surprise to me was William Eklund, who was a power forward, was available. So I thought maybe that uh, Steve Eiserman would announce his name, but he went with a defenseman. Do you guys think that we do have a good amount of great shooters and goal scorers in our organization down the pipeline? And he just thought, hey, defense, defensive core, that's where we need to work? Well, I think maybe Steve Eiserman uh, really likes uh, the, the youngsters that he has on the team right now, and, and that includes a guy like uh, Verana. And I think that maybe if all of them are healthy with Bertuzzi and Verana, and, and let's face it, these players that we've selected or the Red Wings have selected are going to be here two, three years down the road. But sure. I think Steve Eiserman has a lot of um, faith in the youngsters that they're going to continue to grow, guys like Philip Zadina, Michael Rasmussen. Mm -hmm. They're going to put the puck in the net. So, you know, obviously they still need – to find some center icemen, I believe. And I think that's what we'll, we'll see in the second half of this draft. All right, we're, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, look, Steve said it last night, uh, you know, because he was questioned about, well, hey, you know, are you ever going to address the offense? Uh, what are you going to end up doing, you know, in, in day two? And he said, look, you're not going to win – if you don't have a good defense. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to know. I mean, you know, he obviously, at this point, and certainly you need to score goals, and the Red Wings do need offense, and they need some goal scores. and I would expect today in rounds two through seven, you're going to see him pluck some, uh, some gems, some diamonds in the rough. But overall, I think it's pretty simple. If you look at what, uh, what the Red Wings did last night, they're going to concentrate on defense and in net, and if you're strong in those two areas, the offense will come. Absolutely. And when we talk about uh, the defensive core and the future of the Detroit Red Wings, someone we were uh, talking about a little bit earlier, Maritz Sider, who was the Detroit Red Wings draft pick two years ago at uh, sixth overall as well. So is, is this a pair we can see sometime down the line? By the time uh, Simon Edmondson makes his way to the NHL, Maritz Sider is going to be a little bit more seasoned with, uh, with a right-handed defenseman in Sider and a left-handed defenseman in Simon Edmondson. Is this a pair we could see down the line, <laughs> both standing at 6'4", six, 6'5"? Five. It could be, Carly. And, uh, and uh, the other thing, too, is you look at the overall depth that the Red Wings have now with young young players that they've drafted. I mean, Albert Johansson's going to be a pretty solid defenseman, too, I think, in this National Hockey League. Down the road, you've got uh, Jared McIsaac, who's been often injured with shoulder problems, but he has an upside to him. Of course, uh, a name we haven't talked about, but he's already a, a pretty bona fide player back there on the blue line is Philip Ronick. So, mm -hmm. you know, down the road, Gustav Lindstrom, like, they're going to have a really good, solid core defenseman. To Amisto's another player that the Red Wings, Steve Eisman drafted uh, a couple of years ago. You know, he, he could be an outstanding prospect. Uh, so, so they, they, they're building their defensive core up. And I agree with Art. And if you look at any Stanley Cup championship team, you win with a good goaltender, a very good goaltender, and you, you have to have depth on the blue line because the playoffs are a grind. You're going to need six, seven, eight defensemen. And look what happens at the trade deadline, Art. Everybody, every team wants a defenseman. you got to have depth on the blue line, and the Red Wings are working towards that. Well, you know, anytime you ask any general manager about defensemen and, uh, you know, you, know, you can never have enough. Remember old Scotty Bowman used to tell us, I mean, if Scotty could have dressed 24 guys as defensemen, he might have, you know, and a good goaltender. I mean, they're, they're at a premium. You know, you have to, you, especially in this league now with no clutching and grabbing, it's a really fast league. You need fast mobile defensemen who are able to move the puck, number one, have some offensive skill, but also able to shut down the opposition. I mean, that's the key. And it really does look like, and you know, we just named off a litany of guys, and there's a couple of other guys we didn't even name off sure. and these are all assets that could be traded eventually for offense too or maybe it may, maybe it's a very attractive when you look at the Red Wings a couple of years down the road and you got Mo Sider back there you've got Wallander whom we haven't even talked about uh, you know I like this I like this Wyatt Newpower kid that I think might be a diamond in the rough that uh, they signed from the Cleveland Monsters this year everybody thought he was ticketed to Columbus and Detroit swooped in and and, and signed him uh, I I think if you look at it and you start looking at the Red Wings they're going to have a very attractive young up and coming team and they're going to be built as we said from the crease out you know I'm not you know Kosa uh, look I, I think Kosa is 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 a great player 
And I also think Wallstadt was a great player. So at this point, what you have to do is you have to see what the De Detroit decided to do. You have to put your faith in Chris Draper and in Steve Eiserman, Jesse Wallen, and that scouting staff that they made the right pick. And again, it comes down to the fact is that they were more comfortable with Kosa. He was great in interviews, and they interviewed him several times. And the thing that they like most about him is that he played on a small ice surface, and he showed that he can handle the puck, whereas Wallstead in a larger ice surface, surface, they don't have the opportunity quite as much in Europe as you do in North America for a goalie to handle the puck. The only difference I see is I think Wallstack could be NHL ready in the next couple of years. I don't disagree with and, that. And his game probably is more polished at this point than Kosa, but I liked what Steve Eiserman said. He said, you know what, we've, we've got Nadelkovich, you know, he's going to be, uh, he's only 25 years old, he's going to be around for a little bit, and they're just going to give Kosa time to develop, and they're not yep. going to rush his development. If it takes four years, it takes four years. Well, I, I, I talked to Kosa last night for an eternity, I guess, but uh, I still talk to him quite a bit. And uh, what I really like about him, like much like Lucas Raymond last year when we talked to him, Lucas Raymond said, I want to compete for a roster spot legitimately in the fall of 2021. And guess what? He's going to compete for a roster spot. And, uh, you know, Kosa looks at it, he goes, I'm going to go to Edmonton for a year. And then I'll go to GR for a year, and then I'm ready to be the Red Wings starting goaltender. You have to love that. You have to absolutely love that type of confidence. And he's brash. He was saying during all his interviews and everything I read about Kosa leading up to the draft, and I read a lot about Kosa and Wallstead, Kosa was, you know, unabashedly said, I'm the best goalie in this draft. I am the best goalie in this draft. <laughs> so, Lots of confidence Yeah, you there. have to yeah, love you the gotta, confidence. Again, I mean, but. hey, if, if, if I'm looking at a kid and he feels that, that strong and that confident about himself, hey, let's take a little bit of a flyer on him. You have to love the confidence, but it does take some time to develop. And I think right now the goalie rotation that the Detroit Red Wings have in Thomas Grice and Alex Nedeljkovic, that will last us for a couple of years at least until uh, Sebastian Costa is ready to make his NHL debut. And I do want to talk a little bit about what Draper said last night when he was talking and addressing the media. He said that he had Costa and Osgood talking on the phone and said, we know Ozzy can talk. He said that Osgood pointed out the fact that Costa was asking Osgood questions. It wasn't just Osgood, you know, asking him questions and giving him tips. Sebastian was so into the conversation that Osgood said he asked some really outstanding questions for such a young guy. So it's really good to see someone who's really trying to learn the craft and continue to grow and have that kind of confidence. Another thing Steve Eisenman talked about prior to the draft uh, to the media, he was talking about how certain players, they just dominate their teams and and you look for those players to really jump up quick and one of the guys could be Sebastian Kosa look at his numbers 17 one and one shortened season with the Edmonton Oil Kings the save percentage nine 947 I mean that's outstanding for a goaltender now it's it's only junior hockey but Again, he dominated his team. He dominated the league. And those are the types of players that you expect to move up quickly. Sure. One last question for you, Art. When we look at the Tampa Bay Lightning back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions, this is a team that Steve Eiserman built. And the MVP was goalie Andre Vasilevsky, excuse me, picked at 20th overall. 19th. 19th, 19th yeah. overall. So he was just outstanding for that team. And you really look at a Stanley Cup contending team, a Stanley Cup winning team, and you really look at the goalie in that. Well, the four teams that were left standing in the final four in the conference finals uh, uh, this year, all four netminders were picked in the first round. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go goaltending doesn't have the, uh, uh, y y you know, the, uh, well, you can't get a goalie in the first round. You shouldn't do that. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I, I think now that, you know, everyone realizes that, especially the way the league is now, you need really good goaltending. And and I look at it this way. Steve was asked last night about Sebastian Kosa and Vasilevsky because they're about the same size and, you know, they're big, tall netminders. And he said it's unfair at this point, you know, to, to compare Andre and uh, uh, Sebastian Kosa. But when it came down at the end of the day, the thing we liked about Kosa is he can stop the puck. And that's what he's going to do for the Detroit Red Wings. And hopefully sometime down the line, we will see him in net for the Red Wings in the Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> All right. Well, for now, we want to pivot and talk a little bit about preseason because it's right around the corner. And we have a ton of players that we want you to see in preseason. It's been a while since you guys have been at Little Caesars Arena. It's right around the corner, like I said, with games against the Chicago Blackhawks, Buffalo Sabres, Columbus Blue Jackets and Pittsburgh Penguins. Fans can sign up for the single game ticket presale list to have an opportunity to purchase tickets before the general public by visiting DetroitRedWings.com slash pre.
pre-sale. And of course, the schedule for the regular season was just released. And as I was saying, we're so excited to have you fans back at the Little Ce at Little Caesars Arena. We're excited to announce the opening night presented by Coke will be on Thursday, October, October 14th between the Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning that we were just talking about. Fans can sign up for the single game ticket pre-sale list to have an opportunity to purchase tickets before the general public by visiting DetroitRedWings.com slash pre-sale. Woo! <laughs> That's a lot of talking from me. <laughs> there you, there you <laughs> go. Mouthful. But Get again, your tickets. But again, just so excited to have the fans back at Little Caesars Arena this year. We missed you all last season, and we have a ton to unpack, though, in today's draft. Second through seventh rounds, the Red Wings will be picking six picks today, unless, you know, of course, as we saw yesterday, there's a bit of trades. You never know with Steve Eiserman. But uh, I do want to talk about pick 38, okay? So we're looking at some defensemen forwards. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, we have a long list that we're going to talk about here. Uh, first, I want to point out Atu Ratu. I know we were talking about him, and we're super surprised that he didn't go in the first round. Is that someone, Ken, that you think that Steve will call out today? Well, a couple of things. First on Ratu is that uh, his stock really dropped. And, yeah. um, you know, he kind of leveled out his play. And I think what scouts are looking at is you always want to see those players continue to move up the ladder. And um, I guess they were surprised that, uh, you know, he just kind of leveled out. And I think because of that, his stock dropped and, and you know, he's going to go in the later rounds. But let me say this. To all the people out there that, including myself, who, who wanted center icemen and wingers maybe in the first couple of picks, let's keep in mind that Steve Eiserman. Uh, understands uh, how valuable the later rounds are. And, and keep this in mind, he found a couple of 40 goal scorers in the second and third round in Nikita Kucherov and Braden Point. So he has that ability in the past to be able to look through the players that we will see today and, and find those diamonds in the rough. So, you know, I have confidence in Steve Eiserman and Chris Draper and the whole management staff and the scouting staff that they're going to they're gonna really look through the uh, – through the draft, and, and I think in this round, in the second round, they're going to really find a player, I think, that's going to help them offensively. Yeah, I, I think Ken's absolutely right. I think Steve looks at it this way, or if you look at it, you could say, well, geez, uh, why didn't they go for forward? You know, forwards need, they need help up the middle. Right. I think when he looked at this draft class at forward, I think he sees this as being not much delineation between a lot of these guys, meaning that he knows that there's guys in the second and third rounds that – might have a, maybe a little bit more development time, but they're almost as good as the forwards that were taken in the first round. And again, you know, I can't stress it enough. Edmondson falling to them at six is a no-brainer, and they needed goaltending. I mean, I was convinced that they were going to take a goaltender in the first round. I wasn't convinced it was Kosa, obviously, but, <laughs> but that's what they did. Now he's going to work his magic. Now he goes for the diamonds in the rough. There are forwards out there that Steve... It was, you know, I guess if he were honest, he, you know, if he maybe would have taken him at 23 or 15 because they traded up or six. I mean, I, I think that uh, uh, right now this is this is where the Detroit Red Wings are going to be built as far as a complete team. He's going to fill needs today with guys that are going to come out of nowhere and surprise you and be goal scorers and fit the bill and fit the need. I think the forwards that they take today, and I think they're going to take a lot of forwards. They only have six picks now uh, in this draft, but uh, I, I think they're going to do quite well. And, I, and I, I'm eager to see who these guys are going to be, because let's be honest, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us do. None of us do. Steve Eiserman definitely keeps it all hush-hush, but you were talking about forwards, and you mentioned magic and made me think of magic man pavel datsuk he went late in the draft and look at what he was able to do yeah henrik zetterberg's another one henrik zetterberg yeah absolutely so you just really never know and that's the beautiful thing about the nhl draft is these guys are 17 18 years old i mean to me they're babies so they're still developing their craft has just begun to uh, to thrive and it's just amazing to see how good they are right now and how much they will develop and improve in the future so you get guys in the sixth round and they're going to be outstanding players in the league. You just never know. You just have to take a gamble on some of the guys, and I think that's what Steve Eisenman's looking for today. I, I still say, Carly and Art, that uh, down the road, you have to find two center icemen eventually. That they're going to be your number one and number two centers, and uh, again, you just can't go out there and pluck them off the cherry tree. I mean, you've got to draft the players, you've got to develop them, and you got to make them your one and two centers down the road. So I really think, and, and Steve Eiserman was an outstanding center, as we all know, when you look at the Red Wings of the past or any championship team, you're, you're built down the middle. Eiserman, Fedorov, mm -hmm. uh, Datsuk, Zetterberg. So down the road, 
the Red Wings are going to have to find those one, two center icemen. Right. I mean, look at, I mean, you know, going back, you know, going down memory lane here. I mean, Iserman, Fedorov, Larianov, and Draper. I mean, that's <laughs> that's incredible. You know, that's a murderer's row in it in itself. I, I think Ken's absolutely right. I would say this though. Steve again said something. Listen, we're going to address the offense, hopefully in the draft, but it could be through trade and free agency too. They have a lot of assets, especially on the blue line. Again, as we talked earlier, right-handed shooting defensemen that are young and all look pretty good. You know, Steve is a, you know, he's a very good trader. So they're going to accumulate a wealth and a talent pool here in Detroit. Some of them are going to end up staying, and I think some of them are going to be moved to uh, complement the needs that they need. And, you know, who knows? Maybe offense or goal scores, either through free agency. If Steve signs a big-name free agent, a big-name offensive free agent to a term contract, meaning, you know, probably seven years if he's an unrestricted free agent, that means the Red Wings are ready to make their move. I mean, that, that's what that's telling me. Right. And maybe that's the route Detroit's going to have to go because the players that are falling to them right now in the first round are all very, very good players but don't quite fit that center bill. Well, the other thing, too, real quick, is that uh, they've got money. And, uh, right. you know, they've, they've, they got, they've got the assets, they've got money, and that goes a long way as far as spending money and bringing who you want to bring in to help bolster the team. But the thing is, is they're not ready, I don't think, right now to sign somebody for seven, eight years. No, he's not going to do that. Look, at Nadalkovich is only here for two years, you know. I <laughs> right. mean, and then that takes him into his, uh, he'll be 27, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. Obviously, if he, if he pans out and does well, I mean, Steve can sign him to a certain extension. Grace is in the last year of his deal this year, so again, Again, we're going to be talking about goaltending again next year, too. For a while. Too. Unless, unless Kosa is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking. I've seen their play in Tampa, and I was going to joke when we came out of that, uh, Carly, when you're talking about the, the opening night here at Little Caesars Arena, Detroit and Tampa, that can't you wait. Vasilevsky versus Kosa. I can't wait, you know, but uh, <laughs> that, that might be a little premature. Well, there's definitely a lot still ahead of us today. I do want to point out the picks that we have uh, for the second day. So, of course, we traded away number 23, number 48, excuse me, and number 138. So we only have left number 38, 70, 102, 128, 134, and 166. A lot, like I said, still, be, still to be heard from from hello what's going on here still a lot to hear from steve reiserman in day two of the draft there are two forwards that we were talking about forwards that i wrote down in nikita and excuse me for this pronunciation chubrikov and sasha pastorjov so it's sasha pastorjov he is actually a michigan man he plays for the u.s national team development program and art and i were talking about how long of a name that is <laughs> but um is that someone that they could bring they could bring uh, as a Michigan man to Detroit Red Wings. I mean, are we looking at defensemen? Are we looking at forwards? Are we just don't know? Well, his brothers, as you mentioned, played at Michigan, and he's a fantastic passer from what I uh, uh, hear, and he creates scoring chances. So, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, he could help your team. Well, yeah, he certainly could help your team. I, you know, I, I'm wondering that uh, if everybody keeps coming back to Michigan, how are they, how's Mel Pearson going to share that puck? I mean, everybody's going to be uh, – Michigan's going to be a real good puck possession team. Let's put that in a 60-minute game. They're going to control the puck for like 57 minutes, I would think. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's a very, very good player. Uh, you, know, he, he's, he, you know, he's obviously familiar with the area with his brothers playing for Michigan. He plays for the developmental program. I mean, that is somebody that if he's available, I would not be surprised if the Red Wings don't take him. Of course, you know the Detroit Red Wings love their Michigan men. Here we have our captain, Dylan Larkin, as a Michigan man. Luke Glenn Denning, the list goes on and on for the Red Wings. But as I said, six picks for day two of the NHL draft. The first few rounds will be on ESPN2, and the last few rounds will be on NHL Network. So tune in. Don't miss out. Like we said, a ton of picks still ahead of us. We will be recapping everything later on with pressers uh, later on in the evening after the NHL draft has concluded. So tune into that at DetroitRedWings.com and social media websites. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure and I always learn so much from you guys. Well, it's exciting and uh, we glued to the TV today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be great. Of course it is and thank you so much fans for tuning in to the 2021 Detroit Detroit Red Wings draft party presented by Meyer. Thank you to Meyer and thank you again. And guys, let's go Red Wings. Let's go. Go Wings. Yep. <laughs>